just as this big crowd is kicking up a sandstorm, Larry Fedora in his second year as the head coach of North Carolina, won eight games a year ago. He is an offensive guru, and over the second half of the season, his offense performed very well. Victor Hampton is deep for South Carolina to return. It is Nick Weiler who will get the 2013 season underway right now. Welcome to college football. Hampton will bring it out. Hampton takes a big hit, doesn't get back to the 20. Dominique Green, a freshman defensive back from Laurenburg, lowers the boom, and that is where Connor Shaw and the Gamecocks will put it into play. Shaw is 6'1", 209-pound senior from Flowery Branch, Georgia, the winningest quarterback in South Carolina history. But he has to do a good job today passing the football I'll be interested to see how Spurrier does with him in running the football he's a good running quarterback it's North Carolina defense struggled at times last year gave up some big numbers Marcus Lattimore is departed starting running back is Mike Davis Davis younger brother a former Clemson star James Davis gets the first carry and a good gain on first down here are the impact players when the Gamecocks have the ball. Mike Davis, who you saw, and Shaq Rowland, a former Mr. Football in the state. Trey Boston and Kareem Martin, the lead defenders for the Tar Heels. Martin continuing a long line of outstanding defensive linemen who applied their trade in college in Chapel Hill. Davis picked up five. Shaw has three receivers to his left. Back to Davis, first down and more across the 30 to the 35. And South Carolina has its initial first down pickup of a dozen. I love this game plan by South Carolina. They have to be able to run the football against a much smaller front seven from North Carolina. I think this is the best offensive line in the Steve Spurrier area here at South Carolina. They look like an NFL line. They got to play like it. They have to dominate. We expect tempo from North Carolina and South Carolina showing a little bit. Connor Shaw going for his first pass and taking a shot. There is Shaq Rowland. He's out there. First touchdown of the 2013 season. 65 yards. and Steve Spurrier told us with the different coverages North Carolina played, they wanted to take some shots, and he didn't waste any time doing it. The benefit when you run the football, you can run play action, some defenders close to the line of scrimmage. There is an example of Connor Shaw trusting the area of the field. And how about Shaq Rowan making a massive play early? Elliot Fry, a walk-on true freshman. His first kick as a Gamecock is true. It didn't even take 90 seconds before South Carolina noted for defense. Strikes with a big play up top. Shaq Rowland, second career touchdown. Cocky up by seven. If you had under 80 seconds for the first touchdown of the 2013 season, you win. South Carolina up 7-0. A great job of coverage recognition by Connor Shaw. This is quarters coverage. Demir Bird is going to run the in route. That occupies the safety, leaving the post open for Shaq Rowan. And that's a pretty good way to start the game, guys. One for one with a long touchdown pass. Well, and two runs to show your physical play. And then Connor Shaw, one of the big question marks about this team is who's going to step up at receiver. Shaq Rowland says, I'll throw my name in the hat because they're going to need a big-time playmaker on the outside. We were at practice on Tuesday, and the Gamecocks ran that play, and, and Spurrier was a little upset as we kick off because Rowan broke stride, and then it ended up being an overthrow, and they didn't get the touchdown. This time, Shaq kept running, and he gets the 65-yard score. The kickoff goes out of bounds as Landon Ard, sophomore from Rock Hill, South Carolina, boots it out of bounds. It'll give the Gamecocks good field position to start, and 
or rather the Tar Heels, I should say, as the Gamecocks got the first score. I think the biggest place that Connor Shaw can improve this year as a passer is throwing on time. And that was a great example of taking a seven-step drop and letting it go on time, giving Shaq Rowan an opportunity to run under the football. Now, North Carolina has the ball on its 35-yard line. Bren Renner, the quarterback. There is Jadavion Clowney, and we'll be keeping a camera on Clowney throughout much of the night. You'll see him line up in various spots and whammy towards defense, and with the ball on the hash mark, Clowney, who typically plays an end, is going to get right up in Russell Bodine's kitchen right over the nose. Renner, his first pass, you're going to see a lot of short passes and some excellent coverage. Now by number nine, that's Sherrod Golightly. Tapley made the catch. It was a loss on the play for the couple. It'll be second and long. And it's going to be Where's Waldo. You're going to have to find Clowney. They're going to move him around, not let North Carolina know where he's at every single play on defense. To the ground, Romar Morris. That's back a couple of the yards of the loss for two more. It'll bring up third down and long, and this is where you can slow down the tempo of North Carolina if you're able to put the Tar Heels in a third and long situation. And when you can move Jadavian Clowney around, it forces that offensive line to just pause that extra second to identify him. Here he is right now at the top, lined up on preseason All-American left tackle James Hurst. This is a matchup both guys have anticipated. Hurst does a good job on him. Renner with a terrific throw and is complete to Eric Ebron. And Ebron is a guy who could break out and have a star-studded season. Pick up a 13 and a first down for the Heels. There's a lot of different ways that North Carolina is going to try to slow down Jadavian Clowney. There's a chip block by running back Romar Morris. Now Morris has the ball. Short gain on the give. Renner is going to look for Ebron, particularly on third down and any time that they feel they have an isolated matchup with number 85 in Carolina Blue. Renner's going to be looking his way. Two guys, blocker mates now. Renner wanted to make sure he was on the same page with a guy who likely will prove to be one of his favorite receivers, but not his only one. His other tight end is Jack Tab. Tab is going to play a little offense and defense. Looked like a defensive player. Jack didn't hold on to that one. Here are the impact players when North Carolina has the ball. The left tackle, Hurst, preseason All-American. John Heck, the son of Andy Heck on the other side. And both of them are going to get a load of Clowney. Yeah, and you're talking about a freshman. So look to see Clowney move Clowney to left end so they can get some refreshment, especially in the passing situation. Renner the screen. A.J. Blue. And Blue is trapped, tipped up by... Bryson Williams, Victor Hampton is over there close as well. He'll bring up a fourth down. And one way to slow Clowney down is screens, draws. And you've seen two screens already. That one ran right at him. Let him get upfield. The tackle knows he can bail. And then they pitch it right underneath him. The quarterback doesn't have to sit back in the pocket and get abused by Clowney. And the best way to defend Temple if you're a defense, get off the field. They allowed one first down on that possession. Now they go back to the sidelines to get a breather, give the football back to their offense. Tommy Hibbert standing at his 40 to punt it. Averaged a little better than 41 yards per punt a season ago. Victor Hampton, return man for South Carolina. Hibbert had it hit inside the five, but couldn't kill it there, so it goes into the end zone. And it'll come out to the 20. South Carolina will have it for the second time tonight. First possession, most productive as we take a look at the weekend menu brought to you by Applebee's as soon as we are done here on ESPN in South Carolina. Go to Nashville, Ole Miss and Vanderbilt. Both teams on the uptick, and you see the weekend slate, including on Monday night, Labor Day, Florida State against Pittsburgh as the Panthers make their debut as a member of the ACC. And as much as we've enjoyed Jadavion Clowney in his three years, Ole Miss has the guy that they hope will be as much of a force for them and freshman Robert Kimdichie that we'll see later tonight. Now that's a, a must-win game for both teams, which I feel weird saying in week one between two teams that are unexpected to compete for the conference, but if they're both going to take the next step, I think each of those teams has to win that game. Have tonight. you seen Ole Miss's schedule early? Rough. <laughs> they need to win that one. Texas and Alabama within the first five, six weeks of the season. Davis hit immediately. Norquithus Otis was the first guy get some pads on it. South Carolina's offensive line is way bigger than North Carolina. You can see per player, they outweigh North Carolina by 50 pounds per man. 
That has to show up tonight when they're running the football, getting pushed. They've done a good job so far early. How about that belly that Ronald Patrick, the right guard's <laughs> rock? He's trying to go Warmack on us, isn't he? <laughs> Second and eight. Shaw dangerous when he pulls it down. Gets out to the 25. He'll be five yards short of the first down. And, and that's one of the things that you struggle with with Connor Shaw a little bit. It, it's one quick read, and then his eyes are coming down, and he's taken off. He needs to do a, a better job this season as the year goes on. He needs to do a better job staying in the pocket and getting to that second read and throwing the football. But there's a point right now, David, where North Carolina has to keep Connor Shaw in the pocket on this third down. Don't let him get outside, because that's really where he can hurt you with his legs on third down. Shaw, two for two. There's another first down, I believe, depending on the spot. That was the tight end, Drew Owens. Not going to see Rory Anderson tonight. Tight end who's been dealing with a hamstring issue. Bruce Ellington, star wide receiver and star basketball player who caught the winning touchdown pass against Michigan in the Outback Bowl, also has been bothered by a hamstring. And we're waiting to see how much Bruce would be able to play, if any. The Gamecocks a little bit thin at tight end, but Owens making a catch, and there is Bruce. Don't want to wear out a hamstring on opening night. He's going to be an important part. Reset the play clock to 25 seconds and started on my signal. That's the referee, Dennis Hennigan. We have an ACC crew on the field, an SEC crew in the replay booth. Completion to the tight end. Gives South Carolina a first and ten at its own 30. Connor Shaw pulls it and keeps it. Shaw turning the corner. Big game for him. Out close to midfield and in to North Carolina territory before he's tripped up by Tim Scott to pick up a 21. What I think makes Connor Shaw unique with respect to being a dual threat quarterback, unlike a lot of other running quarterbacks, Connor Shaw has the speed to take it the distance every snap, and that's on tape. Just ask Missouri last year. That's what makes him special. And he's physical enough to do the inside running game, too, in short yardage. But one thing to watch, too, is him getting down and not taking extra hits because he needs to stay healthy. A lot of times the end of runs, he lowers his shoulders and try to deliver a boom. This North Carolina defense, guys, has some problems at linebacker. And we just saw Malik Simmons sort of run right by Connor Shaw. And by the time he realized the Gamecock quarterback had the ball, it was too late. Kareem Martin was putting on the pressure, but not enough, not in time. And he fires complete, and Nick Jones making the grab. There's another very good example of Connor Shaw throwing the football, getting it out on time. He's not eyeballing any of his receivers. He's got his eyes downfield. Right after that hitch step, the football comes out. You see how wide open Nick Jones is in the slot. Connor Shaw helps throw him open. Shaw's hit his first three for 81 yards. So you saw last time you saw run run and you saw a little play action so let's see some more of it bobbled the snap davis has it breaks and tackles tar heels unable to lock up davis gets down to the 33 yard line he'll be about five short of the first down and i know it seems like everything right now is working for south carolina but if you're unc you'd rather connor shaw beat you throwing it you can't allow them to run the football. You have to stop that, both conventional ways when they hand off and Connor Shaw as well. Meet, make Shaw beat you throwing. It would help to get a pass rush when he throws, though. With the size differential you guys talked about, wonder how long before the defensive coordinator, Vic Coney, realizes he's going to have to send some extra bodies. Looks like he's doing it right now. Hit and wrapped up almost immediately. That's Tim Jackson getting to Mike Davis. It'll bring up the third down and an important one for North Carolina. It'll be a little bit of a momentum boost if they could slow down the game. And Davey, you just mentioned how it helped to get a pass rush. While South Carolina is a big physical offensive line, I don't think their two mammoth tackles are very good in pass pro. So someone has to step up for UNC coming off the edge. There is Nick Coney who had to deal with a bevy of injuries here in camp. Nathan Stoff starting middle linebacker was hurt. Shaquille Rashad, Sam Smiley, abandoned in a strong safety, both lost as well. We put the heels together with a little duct tape and bailing wire, but the guys are up to the challenge here as they stop the run on third down. It'll be fourth down and a couple 
And with the uncertainty in the kicking game for South Carolina, I think Spurrier is going to leave the offense on the field. He is, and he's bringing on a couple of extra tight ends, showing that he may be willing to run this football again. If he were to run it, I would run behind the left side. That's the biggest side behind the left tackle, Corey Robinson, and left guard, A.J. Khan. And this is where Connor Shaw's feet puts you in a dilemma on defense, too, because he can also run at the same time and pick up an extra blocker. Uh, Spurrier decides to use a timeout of fourth and two for the Gamecocks at the North Carolina 30. ESPN College Football Primetime is served by Applebee's. Applebee's two for $20 menu just got even better with the new Honey Pepper Grill. And in part by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. And the experienced Buick lease. It's a new lease on luxury. We give you behind the scenes looks, guys. We take you inside the caca booth, which is just here across from Williams Bryce Stadium. Got some boiled peanuts, South Carolina delicacy, and the freshman kicker, Elliot Fry, who kicked the extra point, staying on the sidelines. It would be a 47-yard field goal attempt. South Carolina doesn't have anyone who's made a field goal. Our Landon Art, who kicked off, has made a couple of point afters, and now Fry's made one. So on a fourth and two from the North Carolina 30, second possession of the night for the Gamecocks, Spurrier's going to try to pick up the first down. Brandon Wilds. And it running back. Wilds has it. He's hit. He's trying to drive. He broke a couple. Can he get across the yellow line? What a strong, tough run. He's carrying every Tar Heel short of Lawrence Taylor and Julius Peppers all the way down for the first down. And that is demoralizing if you are a defense, because it looks like they have this stuff. Now, they run behind the left side, which is their best side. It looked like Kareem Martin. He was in there. Bent. Had a shot to make the play, but there's the push, there's the size of South Carolina's O line demonstrating itself pushing the pile. And one question mark everybody's gonna have coming into the season is who's gonna be that physical runner for Marcus Lattimore? And Wilds, he had 300 yard games and Lattimore got hard a couple seasons ago, but that was a that was a man run right there. Now David Wilds, when he came in, he's gonna be Lattimore's back about a high ankle sprain red shirt of the season ago. Shaw has a lot of time. Now outside the tackle box, he'll toss it away. It'll be second down and 10. A so, lot of time is an understatement there, <laughs> wasn't it? So what does it do for South Carolina's offense if you have Wild return to the form that we saw a couple of years ago as a freshman and able to give some power running 100-yard games and so forth? I think it provides the physical presence that Marcus Lattimore had in this offense. Don't, don't forget, Mike Davis and Brandon Wilds also both catch the football yeah. very, very well, which is an important in this offense too and it has to allow Connor Shaw to be a play action guy not just a drop back guy all the time they have to have the running game with him Wild still in there not, Davis is not a small back he weighs 215 pounds he's not really a tall guy and Shaw's gonna have to snap this thing to get to the way Connor's gonna pull it down and run and he's tripped up first guy to get to him was Norkeithis Otis Keith is hope to get him on the ground a little bit quicker, but we have another third now. So that's the first time we've seen the pass rush. A smaller defensive bandit player, defensive end, or Keith Otis at 240 pounds, applying the pressure, forcing Connor Shaw to tuck it. Now you set up a long third and ten. By North Carolina, sit back in a big zone defense. Keep the football in front of you. Four receivers spread out. Roland, who caught the touchdown pass, is at the top of your screen. Shaw to Roland, and he can't hang on. Those two almost hooked up for a second touchdown. It'll be fourth down and 10 from the 22, and now Spurrier will send out the field goal unit. He missed the throw, but I love the conviction from Connor Shaw in this play because he threw it on time, and he threw it into the area you'd like. That's a tough catch for Shaq Roland. Former Mr. Football in the state of South Carolina, he's good enough to make that catch. A good job stepping up in the pocket, too, and delivering the football. I mean, he threw it right over the corner. The corner had a chance to make a play. Giles, he put it only where Shaq could catch it. Well, Elliot Fry trying from 39 yards out. His longest field goal in high school was 44. What kicking problems, Reese? Boots that. I just said kicking, kicking questions. <laughs> I didn't necessarily say problems. And right now, Fry has had the answer, and Shaq Rowland almost 
had his second touchdown grab of the night. Missed it by that much. Needs to hang on to that. North Carolina's down by 10. Like the boogie monster. He is a monster to opposing offenses. South Carolina, Davion Clowney's team up on the Tar Heels 10 0 in the first quarter. Glad to have you with us in Columbia. Reese Davis, Jesse Palmer, and David Pollock haven't called Clowney's name much, but then again, he hasn't had to be on the field much. No, the South Carolina offense is, is taking the ball and they've run 15 plays already. And, and I tell you what, this is a danger zone because now this North Carolina offense comes back on the field with their tempo. And if they give it right back to South Carolina's offense, it's going to be some tired Tar Heels. Landon Ard taking care of the kickoff duties. He drives it low and looks as if maybe his second kickoff of the night was headed out of bounds. But it bounced up to Sean Tapley. Tapley out close to the 25-yard line. Samantha Ponder on what the Tar Heel offensive line is having to do to deal with Clowney. Yeah, Reese, that was the only positive for UNC there on that last series. They had plenty of time for their offensive line coach to ask the guys questions, and he had lots of questions for them, trying to ask him, can you reach him? Where is he getting lined up? Telling them they've got to use their splits for space, and especially telling his guards that they've got to help out their tackles. Obviously, they have a freshman right tackle in John Heck. They're asking the guards and James Hurst to help out on the offensive line, guys. That's exactly, Sam, where Clowney's lined up on that freshman right tackle. He wasn't responsible for him there. Clowney is chasing from the back side. He was after P.J. Thorpe, who made the catch, but Jimmy Legree had it covered up second and long. So you've seen the ways North Carolina's tried to handle him. You chip him with the running back, you throw screens, you throw away from him. He's not a factor if the football's on the other side of the field. Well, bootleg. Ren Renner gets rid of it. It was low for Tab. Now, one thing about sack totals that you might see tonight, historically, Larry Fedora's office, not only at North Carolina, but at Southern Mississippi before that, they, they get rid of the football. They don't give up a lot of sacks. No. And, and they're a high percentage offense. They want to dink and dump. They're not as inclined to go down the field. But this is exactly where the offense doesn't want to be. If this continues, we are in third long situations. It's a lose all night. But you know what, David? I would say that that last incompletion was probably caused by Clowney. Renner knew who was coming after him. And he's after him now. Bren gets rid of it. Let's see if the catch is made along the sidelines, but it is short of the first down. It was T.J. Thorpe. He didn't have enough for the first. Renner got out of there, avoided the sack, but here comes seven. If North Carolina is going to double-team Jadavian Clowney all night, that means there are one-on-ones in other parts of the field. In that example, defensive tackle J.T. Surratt won his one-on-one -on -one force Bryn Renner out of the pocket. And, and that's, it's not always a double-team. It's just like right there, they slid the protection to him. So you got a freshman tackle, John Heck, who, who knows he has help inside. So he oversets to the outside. And, and Clowney comes inside, but he has help. That's okay. Renner's just got to find a place to go with the ball. Tommy Hibbert drives Victor Hampton inside his 25. Victor's got an alley. Whoa, oh, and he took a big hit as he crossed the 35. Big nope. number 91, Alan Champagne, popping the cork and knocking no penalty on huh? his tail. Well, popping the cork is solid, Bruce Davis. No targeting for that, just a good special teams hit. You're watching the SEC on ESPN from williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and South Carolina. Don't forget, NASCAR Sprint Cup Series and Atlanta coverage starting on ESPN Saturday at 7, Sunday at 7, I should say. It's available live on Watch ESPN. As we come down the gut of the season, Jimmy Johnson's the points leader, but, man, he's got a mirror full of old Clint Boyer. He's just 18 points behind. Matt Kens has won the race last week in Bristol. You can... The coverage this weekend, NASCAR Spring Cup Series from Atlanta. South Carolina is leaving tread marks on North Carolina right now. They out gained a 140 to 27. 401 remaining in the first quarter. Gamecocks have scored both times they've had the football. Touchdown and a field goal, and Connor Shaw is running with it. 
good gain on first down. It'll be stopped a few yards short of the first. And this is what makes Connor so, Shaw so, so tough to defend is he starts throwing the football well, they're running it well, and now you bring a quarterback draw. I mean, you get the numbers match up, and he's such a good runner. It just it makes him incredibly difficult. You saw in that last play, North Carolina now starting to get a little impatient on defense. They can't stop the run with only six defenders in the box. They're going to start bringing pressure and a safety down closer to see if they can get it stopped. And Jesse, this is a defense, even with Sylvester Williams on the defensive line a year ago, draft choice, first rounder, he gave up 30 points six times last year and averaged allowing 33 points per game in the C play. Shaw has it complete. Nick Boston Jones not enough for the first North down. Carolina. So you wonder what that confidence level is like right. for North Carolina on that side of the football. A little demoralizing so far in this game, the way South Carolina's been able to run the football. If they convert this third down, this third down, they're further demoralized. They do, and they are. Brandon Wilds inside the Tar Heel 45. And because of South Carolina running so many plays, North Carolina substitute, and they only got two defensive linemen in the game against all that beef that you talked about earlier. All South Carolina has to do is that. And how about this? North Carolina is known for the tempo, and though it didn't necessarily affect the Tar Heels, as Jabari Price makes the tackle, North Carolina wasn't set when South Carolina snapped the ball that There's time. a lot of youth and inexperience on that side of the football for the Tar Heels. They have five freshmen and six walk-ons in their 3D. That's cause for concern right now, aside from the fact that you're getting blown off the ball. There's the starting middle linebacker, Jeff Schottmer, who at one time was a walk-on. Some injuries and attrition pushed him as a sophomore into a starting role. Connor Shaw pulls it down. He'll take off. Shaw inside the 40 before he's upended. Once again, Jabari Price. He'll mark him at the 39. Needs to get it to the 34 to move the chain. Now, there was a little bit of pressure on this play, but I think this is an example where Connor Shaw didn't quite trust what he had over the middle of the field. I thought he had an opportunity on this throw to throw the in route right now. If he lets it go, there's a wide receiver wide open. Instead, he doesn't trust it and doesn't get the game he could have gotten. We'll talk a little bit more about that over the course of the night and why trust in Steve Spurrier's offense when to throw the ball is a little bit different from other offense. It's very, very different. It takes can take a long time to develop. On third and four. Shaw dumps it. First down, the grab is made by K.J. Brent into the game. And Reese, here's another example where Connor Shaw had a wide receiver wide open at the beginning of the, of the play. Now, Connor Shaw coming off the field right now, the backup Dylan Thompson, who, of course, last year won two starts, was huge in their bowl game against Michigan. He's on the field. Also good in the finale against Clemson. It brings more touch, brings more accuracy, a better passer. The playbook definitely changes when he's in the game. Dylan threw that winning touchdown toss to Bruce Ellington. Now Thompson. Off the bench, let it go wide open receiver. Touchdown, South Carolina. It's Kane Whitehurst. So, so Dylan didn't need to get warmed up by handing off or anything first? No, and this is the difference. You know, we talked about coming to this season, who was going to play quarterback for South Carolina. They got two good ones now. And Dylan Thompson showed himself last year really well. Look at the patience in the pocket. Wait for his wide receiver to come open. He can throw the football. It really gives Spurrier two options as opposed to none that he's had in the past when he's been in South Carolina. How about that? Both quarterbacks throw a touchdown on their first attempt in this game. Wow. Extra point is coming, and how about this? The last two passes that Dylan Thompson has attempted, both have wound up in touchdowns. Gamecocks laying a beat down on the heels. Dylan Thompson, first pass of the season, results in a touchdown. Kane Whitehurst, a squad member, his first catch of the season results in a touchdown. Here's Connor Shaw, who threw one earlier. Let's see what happened to Connor on this last run before Shaw replaced him. Well, Reese, it's a good run, and, and he does good things with his feet, but get down. You've got 17 yards down the field. If you want to stick and you want to last this season, he's got to learn to get down and not take the punishment. 
we talked to him about that this week, and he, he felt as if he's done a better job of that. But you remember last year we had the opening yeah. game against Vanderbilt. Certainly that was a little bit more of a freaky play when he got hit as he was trying to get down. But, you know, they they have two good quarterbacks, and you want to keep them healthy. Final minute of the first quarter. Sean Tapley trying to get something going on the heels. Tapley gets it to the 30-yard line. North Carolina will try to get it going as we check in for the first time with Chris Cotter. Reese delivering the cores like cold hard facts on a federal judge's announcement of an agreement between the NFL and over 18,000 retired players today on a $765 million settlement over concussion-related brain injuries. The league will use the funds to compensate victims, pay for medical exams, and underwrite research. For more, stay tuned to the Sports Center over on ESPN News. Reese. All right, Chris, 36 seconds left in the first quarter. Brent Renner hasn't had much of a chance to operate. The freshman, Brian Switzer from Charleston, West Virginia. He's a quick guy with great acceleration as well. Two-time West Virginia Player of the Year is Jadavian Clowney is getting a break. So strike while you can if you're North Carolina. The monster's <laughs> not on the field. You better make hay right now. Take advantage of this. Second and two. Romar Morris. And there's a flag coming down, and I believe a good game by Morris is going to come back. Now the ball popped loose late, and South Carolina recovered it. D.J. Holloman is the one who pounced on the ball, but there's a flag. We'll sort it out. Holding, offense number 71, 10-yard penalty, second down. That's the freshman. John Heck mentioned that he is the son of Andy Heck, the Kansas City Chiefs offensive line coach and former All-American at Notre Dame, was on the national championship team, coached by Lou Holtz back in 88. And his son John getting a bit of a baptism by fire tonight. I like what we just saw from Bryn Renner, tremendous leadership, giving his young freshman tackle tap on the head. Hey, man, it's okay. Stay with me. Big down coming up. So rather than a first down, Close to midfield, it'll be second and 12 from inside their own 30. Look for Eric Ebron here in the slot at the top to work over the middle of the field versus big zone coverage. He's got to be a weapon for Carolina tonight. North Carolina. There's one second remaining on the clock. Though it appears time has expired in the first quarter, and it has. And not the type of start that Larry Fedora and the Tar Heels had hoped for, and precisely what the HBC, the head ball coach, wanted to get going. North Carolina and South Carolina, the grand entrance and a grand start. Second quarter coming, cocky by 17. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear tonight from Columbia, South Carolina. Tires that go the distance make Goodyear a fan favorite. Goodyear more driven. Tire marks being left on North Carolina through the first quarter. Number six, South Carolina with a 17-0 lead. Glad to have you with us on opening night of the 2013 college football season. Reese Davis, Jesse Palmer, David Pollock, and Samantha Ponder. First of 40-plus games on the ESPN networks over this Labor Day weekend. Hope you'll spend the weekend with us. Bren Renner and the North Carolina offense haven't been able to get much going. They're going to try to screen to Romar Morris. He's got tremendous speed, makes a guy miss, and another. Romar has the first down. And, David, that's exactly what North Carolina needed to, to be able to stay on the field a little bit more, pick up the 17. You no, know, absolutely, because, first of all, the pass rush is something they're worried about, so they want to run screens. But Renner had an opportunity with Giovanni Bernard last year to just dump it off in big plays to happen. Romar Morris is a guy that ain't to step up and do the same thing this year. Hit in the backfield, A.J. Blue, 24-year-old senior running back from Dallas, North Carolina, bring up a second down and 12. Well, guys, you know what was big about that? Is getting a first down, right. giving their defense a chance to get a breather. We've seen a lot of three and outs, true. Yeah. They had a quarter change, so they had a couple extra minutes. But getting that first down was big to give that defense a chance to be 100% when they get back on the field. The guy we have not heard from tonight at the top of your screen, Quinshot Davis. You see how tight the coverage is on the wide receiver in North Carolina. Renner. Flag coming in there. I think we're going to get another hold as Renner is hit short of the 50. Renner, 
Dennis Hennigan talking it over. Might have gotten first on that. Holding, offense number 68, 10-yard penalty, second down. I think a big reason why people think the SEC has the best defenses in the country, it's the depth they have on the defensive line. And even though Clowney's out of the game right now, guys, South Carolina still bringing a lot of heat. On that play, Darius Singlish almost looked like he just nosedived. He's, he's a guy that Whammy Ward says is going to be the next great rusher at South Carolina, but I, I'm not sure I like that call. Don't, don't ask Davey, he's a defensive line. Did, did you think that was a hold? It's always holding. He's <laughs> holding on every play, of Reese. Just gotta is. find it. Of course there is. Second and 21 after the penalty. Mishandled on the handoff. Ball's on the ground. And I think Eric Ebron saved the day, at least temporarily, for the Tar Heels. Now they need to find a way to get the ball to Eric and, and not, not by rolling like it on the ground. <laughs> he, and, he, and he's a special athlete. I mean. Yeah. He holds up fine against the run, but he's a dynamic athlete. You see Brent Renner, and this is one thing that North Carolina does that I don't understand. Brent Renner doesn't scare me with his feet, and definitely not on second 25. So when they run this package with him in the zone read in the middle of the field, I don't, I'm not threatened by the quarterback run at all. Mason Harris and Darius English, the rushers, they'll run that tunnel screen. Sean Tapley doesn't always love it, and we have a late flag coming in. Not necessarily late because it was inaccurate. It's sort of flew in at the end of the play. I have a face mask, I believe. Personal foul. Wow. Defense number 90 grabbing the face mask. 15-yard penalty. First down. Wow. As a gargantuan no break for North Carolina. It allows this offense to stay on the field to maintain the drive. And as a defense, you were so dominant. Just a moment ago, Dave, and you have a dumb penalty like that allows him to keep possession. Man, and Chaz Sutton is a really good player. And Jadavian Clown is going to get all the headlines. He drops back into coverage, and you see him fly in there late in the play. You're going to see him coming in. And it looked like a shirt yeah. grab to me, but Lord knows we have to throw penalties if it's close nowadays. <laughs> we'll spend a little time talking about that, too. Renner going to take a shot. There's Ebron, too tall for him. And did you see Victor Hampton pull up a little bit right there? And that is the result, likely, of the new penalties for the targeting foul, which players can be ejected if you take some of those so-called blow-up shots. Watch what, Hampton here. Very, very smart play. Yeah, and Lorenzo Ward has been coaching his secondary on this new rule because he thinks that's where it's the most pertinent. That's where those hits more often occur. And Ebron left his feet a little bit too early. He's got to keep running as far as he can, then jump up and try to get it. But guys, easy to say when you're not getting whacked. Guys, right? why is Jadavian Clowney not back in the game yet for South Carolina? I think just getting a rush, or a rest, I should say, and the other guys are putting a rush on, but now rushing into the middle of the field is A.J. Blue. And Blue sort of tripped over his own feet. There you go, Jesse. Now yeah, you come. Well, you know, okay. I get there you go, big fella. Come Listen, on back in. I get that you want to give him a break, but, I mean, this... this Drive's been going on for seven minutes, plus you had the quarter change. Get your best defenders back on the field. Here he comes, pushing the pocket. Open man along the sideline and reaching and not being able to pull it down inbounds. And the wide receiver, number 81, Kendrick Singleton. And I think North Carolina is doing a good thing by, they're not trying to run their tempo right now. They're trying to slow it down so they can give their defense a rest. But right there, Brent Renner, He's a great quarterback. If he does a great job with his freeze, he's got to make that throw. He's got to put it a little bit more in the line and gives him, give his receiver a chance to catch it. He's got to play big. He's got to carry his team tonight against this team. Now at right end. Move him around, brother. Yeah. They give it to Blue right behind Clowney. They're blocking up front of the entire offensive line, and Blue... It's close to the first down mark. I think he's going to be about a yard short. North Carolina has to do this. They have to have some semblance of a rushing attack to stay balanced to try and keep South Carolina off balance, guys. Back to the ground. Hit in the backfield, and Sutton, who was called for the face mask a few moments ago, will make it a fourth down play for North Carolina. And, and he, Sutton's a baller. Don't make no mistake, Clowney's good, but Sutton's an all-SEC type caliber defensive end who's going to get some good looks opposite Clowney because he's going to get a lot of double teams. It's not just the Clowney show. Kelsey Quarles is a good player, deep tackle. Chaz Sutton, defense, defensive end. There's a lot of guys up front that can play for South Carolina. 
This will be a full timeout. They have linebackers who are speedy but inexperienced, but so far the Gamecock defense has held up. Fourth down when you come back. Opening night of the 2013 season, you're watching the SEC on ESPN. williams Bryce Stadium, Columbia, South Carolina. Gamecocks with a 17-0 lead on North Carolina. There is Jadevian Clowney. Back into the game, and the Tar Heels face a fourth down. Larry Fedora deciding not to try to get points on the board in front of the 25. They'll try to pick up the two. Clowney. Might have been in the neutral zone. Jack Tab has the grab for the first down, so it won't matter. As North Carolina picks up the first down inside the 15. Yeah, and there's no doubt about it. I mean, it's it's an easy call. Clowney jumps off sides. You're okay with those occasionally because you want to you, you want to show up and want to be aggressive. But, but here's the thing, you down. can't do it on fourth down. That's actually, you can't. Yeah, yeah, on was fourth down, you got to be a little and, smarter. And than especially that. at home, too, David. You talked in the open about the noise and how that yeah. helps pass rushers at home. That can't happen when the crowd's loud on a big fourth down like that backed up in their own end. Now, North Carolina has been staggered by a couple of haymakers early, but if the Tar Heels could turn this drive into a touchdown, we got a game working. First down for Bren Renner. Back to the ground. That's worked. A couple of times, Romar Morris, short game, A.J. Blues had nice pickups on inside handoffs, too. And Romar Morris looks different when he touches the football. He's he's quicker. He can make you miss. He's really a guy with that zone read that you can get inside and, and make guys miss and make good things happen. He's run track at North Carolina. He's got the great speed. His runner throws into traffic in the end zone. He was looking for Eric Ebron. Let's check in with Samantha Ponder on the sideline. Reese, this is the situation that South Carolina defensive coordinator Lorenzo Ward said was an unknown because he didn't know how his defense would respond to adversity because they're lacking vocal leadership. He said DJ Swearinger was that guy last year when they lost him. They lost vocal leadership. Very quiet on the defensive side right now. We'll see if somebody steps up. Clowney trying to the sideline on this third and eight. It makes you wonder about his conditioning right away. If he's tired and can't go, North Carolina's got to capitalize. You Where's got been Quinshot Davis at the top of the screen? And Ebron on the same side, your two big targets. A one on one, they like going to Davis, but they don't. Instead, it'll be Ebron underneath. Eric is inside the five, close to the four. That's where he needed to get for the first down. Kedrick Smark has made the stop, and it'll be first and goal for the Tar Heels. And a great job catching the ball, getting north and south, and getting the first down. Back to the ground. Morris looking for the corner instead of finding a game cock, and he got nothing. That third down play, exactly who Renner wanted to go to, and Ebron as we check in quickly with Sam again. Reese Clowney's coming back in right now, but he was a, having a hard time catching his breath after that last play, just like you guys just said. He does have the temperature management system in his pads, giving him cool air, but he was having a very hard time. If you look at him up close right now, still trying to catch his breath, maybe conditioning an issue, even though they told us he's in the best shape of his career this year. That has been the knock on Jadevian in the past, if there was one, is the stamina, 16th play of the drive. Renner wide open, and there's the first catch of the night for Quinshot Davis and a touchdown for North Carolina. What a drive by the Tar Heels. That was a 16-play drive, and I love this pass route down deep. You got man-to-man -man coverage, two hitches, and a slant in the back of the end zone. Nice job anticipating. Quinshot Davis just burned Victor Hampton off the line of scrimmage. Pitch and catch. Quinshot Davis, the only Tar Heel from the state of South Carolina, coming in and making his first grab and making it a score. Tar Heels wanted to see if they could get numbers and perhaps sneak in a two-point conversion. It'll be Thomas Moore. They'll take the one. And Tar Heels look to be on the ropes early, but now Clowney a little bit winded, and North Carolina struck back with a score. ESPN College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Ally Bank. Your money needs an ally. Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. 
and Frostbrew Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Brent Renner just threw the 55th touchdown pass of his career. That's 13 short of the North Carolina all-time record. Get the Tar Heels back in the game. Quinn shot Davis caught it. We got a glimpse of Jadevion Clowney on the sideline. We talked about him being in the best shape of his life, but as Samantha Ponder told us, a little bit winded. Less to do with conditioning than what he's being forced to defend right now, David, in your judgment? Yeah, and, and it's an offense. Everybody in the country is talking about playing faster, not slower, for a reason. It negates the ability of your defensive linemen, especially when you throw screens all over the place, to run everywhere and cover the all five of Victor Hampton brought it out of the end zone for a second. It looked as if he might be able to race to the left sideline, but instead he stopped before he gets to the 25. So he picked up a few more yards, and he just stayed put. South Carolina hasn't been stopped tonight. Touchdown, field goal, touchdown, and they have it back for the fourth time. It is a big weekend for football in the Palmetto State. This one tonight to kick off the season, then Saturday night on ABC. Number five, Georgia, taking on Taj Boyd and the Tigers in what David Pollock is now calling the Death Valley after Clemson beat LSU in the bowl game last year. College game day is going to be there all weekend. Four-hour extravaganza leading into... Texas A&M and Rice at 1 o'clock Eastern time Saturday. A tremendous way to start the season with these two games, the opening night game here and the game a couple hours or so away in Clemson with Georgia coming in. We're saying biggest opening weekend for college football in the history of the state. A couple of teams with aspirations of winning championships trying to get off to a good start. And the North Carolina defense, which hasn't slowed down the Gamecocks, get a stop from Ethan Farmer. But here's a great opportunity, guys, for North Carolina to make a stand. That last drive by North Carolina's offense was 16 plays. Yep. So they're 100% riled up. Get Rested. The get the momentum back on the road in a hostile environment. Great a three, and now give the football back to Bryn Wright. They have to affect Connor Shaw in the pocket. They haven't been able to do it yet. He's had all the time in the world, then can scramble when he wants to. Here is Shaw, who will dump it out, and the flag comes flying in. Mike Davis is unable to hold on. We saw Shaw go out of the game. Dylan Thompson threw a touchdown pass after he took a lick on a scramble. And now uh, the Gamecocks are going to have to back up after a hole. And, and they affected Connor Shaw on that play. They finally got somebody in his face. Holding, 71 offense, 10-yard penalty, second down. That's Brandon Shell, the big sophomore right tackle from yeah. Goose Creek. And watch here. Watch the watch the ET. Watch him come underneath right here. You see the defensive tackle come outside, actually switch the ends, yeah. put Martin yeah. inside, yeah. got pressure in Connor Shaw's face and made him throw the football. Second down and 19. Big Tony's been able to settle that defense down. Shaw's going to run it again. Nowhere to run it. It'll be third and 20 or 21. You know, penalties have all of a sudden become a big issue for South Carolina. That last touchdown drive was kept alive by a personal foul face mask. Jadavian, face mask. Jadavian Clowney went offside on fourth down. Yep. Now you get this big holder penalty on offense. Here you are third in California. South Carolina's got to be smarter, guys. To be fair, though, the Clowney penalty was declined, which point still well taken. Penalties at inopportune times. And the Sutton penalty was phantom. Yeah, well, right. Looks like he might have touched the face mask, but then grabbed the jersey. Officials called the face mask. And Shaw on third and 20 has to escape the end zone as to not get a safety. And now Connor almost threw an interception. It went through the hands of Jabari Price. And for the first time tonight, the Tar Heels forced the Gamecocks to punt and they should get tremendous field position. So Vic Kenning dialing up some different pressures, Davey. First, we saw the tackle end game on yep. the last pressure. This time, he brings pressure from the field to four shots out the pocket. And third and 21, he brought pressure. Yeah. A lot of people just drop back and play it safe. He was like, I'm coming after him. Now you got an opportunity to get your offense the football again. And that big tempo word we talk about, getting clowning these boys tired, now you got an opportunity to do a little bit more of it. Tyler Hall is going to punt it to T.J. Thorpe. Thorpe, who missed last season, with a broken foot is a dangerous return man, but he didn't hang on to the football, the mop, and South Carolina recovers it as Demir Bird.
Well, a uh, momentum change. There is a flag on the field. Let's see what that's for. It's going to be on North Carolina. That is a potential game-changing type play. Definitely momentum shifting. We just talked about how South Carolina had to be more disciplined. Now North Carolina on special teams with a big cough-up. Now Thorpe must muff that punt, and assuming everything stands up as we anticipate it will. Is this a good... I thought Dennis Hennigan was going to come to make the call. And here he comes. Holding number eight on the defense. That penalty is declined. First down. As we take a look at this muffed punt again. Is this the spot here? North Carolina's regained a little momentum. Sudden change opportunity. Yeah. Take a shot here. Well, this is what defense now in the huddle going, take a shot, take a shot, sudden change. And, you know, you just saw a little bit of lackluster offense by South Carolina, but you just got to... That just stings. That hurts. Defensively, you get a stop, you get them out off the field, you're, like, you're excited, you get the ball back to your offense, and now you got to go right back out there. It's a killer. Well, the first time tonight, we're seeing Bruce Ellington, South Carolina's best wide receiver, lining up on the field. Keep an eye on him. He's deadly with the football in his hands, but he's had that hamstring injury all camp. It didn't bother him much when he jogs, but when he tries to open it up full speed, you can feel it. Shaw, not necessarily a shot, but... He fires complete. Shaq Rowland, who caught the first touchdown pass, showing some sticky hands. Shaq Rowland's only six foot one, but at six foot one, he's one of the biggest wide receivers on this offense. And here he shows you the range with those long arms, able to make the tough catch. Yeah, but six foot one on this and this wide receiving core is a, is a That's giant. What I'm I mean, yeah. you got five seven, five nine. I mean, definitely a bunch of guys that are tiny. In the red zone, you think of a guy too for him that you can throw him a jump ball. Shaw's playing nice, too. Now inside the 40. Shaw, now he's going to take the shot. One-on-one -on -one out there. Ryan Self and couldn't quite get together with Roland. It was Tim Scott on the cover. Shaw and most of the 80,000-plus here wanted to pass interference penalty. But Shaw should be upset at himself. Absolutely, yeah. Davey. Connor Shaw has to give Shaq Rowland an opportunity to make this play, and it's become apparent already. Shaq Rowland's going to be the deep threat in the South Carolina offense, but you got to give him a chance. Put it out in front of him. Shaw's got the arm strength. I like the no call, too, by the way. It was severely yeah. underthrown. Yeah, yeah don't, you don't bail out. Don't, yeah, don't bail out of bad I'll play. Tell you what, I'm a quarterback. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> See if North Carolina can continue to bring pressure. It's it's affected South Carolina when they've been doing it. Bailing out of it, just rushing three. Shaw over the middle and too high. Nick Jones was going to run for a while. That pass had been on target. See, there's an example of what can happen when you have short wide receivers. It's a much smaller target to throw at if you're the quarterback. Now, you well, still have to make wait, that wait, play. Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. You still have to make hey, that play. Hey, Dave, you know nothing to do with the short wide receiver. Hit him in the chest, dog. You've got to make the throw, but I'm saying if you got tall receivers coming across the middle, a bigger target to throw. Dave, Dave you, know what, you know what he just did? He just blamed the official and just blamed the receiver uh, for the last few plays of the old quarterback's fault. You guys know that about me by now. South Carolina has converted half of their six third downs. Watch corner blitz here at the bottom of the screen. Here he comes. Shaw steps up. Broken field for Ellington, and it's broken up. Good covers on side. Now Bruce Ellington exchanging some pleasantries. The Tar Heel defender, Kareem Martin, was applying the pressure. I really would have liked to see South Carolina do a better job picking this up. Before the snap, North Carolina was piggybacking on top of the corner. The red, red bells, alarms, everything should be going off. As a quarterback, when you see a corner with a safety lined up five yards over top of him, that indicates it's going to be a corner blitz. They were not very well prepared for that in protection. And T.J. Thorpe. He couldn't handle the last punt. It's picked up by his defense, although he's now standing about 40 yards deeper than he was on the last one he didn't handle. A good job on the punt from Tyler Hall, and he knocks it dead inside the 10. And rather than having it close to midfield as they would have, and they handle the last punt cleanly, they'll have it inside their own 10. The fiery leader of the Gamecocks, Connor Shaw, exhorting his receivers to get the right target. The DirecTV drive to the national championship mobile studios back on the road. 
providing coverage from the biggest stories in college football. The head Tar Heel, Larry Fedora, stopping by, visiting with our sports center and college football live crew here. Scott Van Pelt, Brian Greasy, Mark May, Lou Holtz all here. We'll see them at halftime just a little bit. And then is that the bus you're hopping aboard to go to Clemson after, after the game Absolutely, baby. Riding through the night, get some food. We got some more college football to watch, too. And we do, Ole Miss and Vanderbilt. Man. Coming up later tonight on ESPN. Samantha Ponder also riding down there. Clowney after Renner. And Renner gets back to the line of scrimmage. Denying Jadevi on his first sack of the season, but certainly applying the pressure. It'll be second down and long. Here's Jadevian Clowney when he is rested. Watch the double team. Swims Hurst, blows up A.J. Blue, a tailback, and forces Renner out of the pocket that's that rare pass rushing ability everybody talks about it's that quickness i mean you're just not supposed to move like that at six seven two seven defensive player of the year in the conference virtually everyone expects he'll be the number one pick in the draft renner fires it for sean tapley that's, had to get rid of it a little bit but that's a ball tapley needs to haul in that rare athleticism you talk about cut blocking the unbelievable balance and flexibility to stay on his feet now here's an empty set right now for North Carolina. You anticipate the offensive line will slide towards Clowney or they're gonna get this football out very, very quickly on some sort of screen. There are no backs to help first at left tackle. Now Blue shifts into the backfield. Wide snap, Renner try to turn the corner and he's not gonna do it. Making the stop, Marcus Roberts. And it'll be fourth down, and the Tar Heels needed to pick up a first down there to try to create a little more room for their punter to flip the field a little bit. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think this was supposed to be a, a shovel or a shovel pass. Even. Looked it, like the bad snap took the timing of that play and blew it up. It I wasn't going to. No, it wasn't going to Renner. I can I promise know you that. They weren't trying to get the first down with Brent <laughs> Renner running. Missed opportunity, and now South Carolina with an opportunity to get the football back at midfield. Victor Hampton standing close to the pin drawing of Cocky's claw at midfield. Tommy Hibbert, a low line drive punt. Hampton will catch it on the run. Flag comes in. Hampton goes down to the 35 yard line. We have a North Carolina player who's hurt holding a knee. Hampton also a little shaken up as he took a shot down toward the end of the play. Block in the back, going to back it up. I believe that's number 67, Mac Lloyd, who's hurt here. It's Hampton, who's still being attended to. Just across the 35. Oh, that's dangerous right there. It's like his right leg stuck in the ground. You see Ellerby kind of hit him with his shoulder pad right in the back of the helmet. Now that's an example of one of the plays, uh, one of the definitions of a defenseless player is a player on the ground. Hampton was that, and he took a shot and no flag. Just over five minutes to play in the first half. There is Victor Hampton, who returned the punt for South Carolina being attended to after he took a shot from Brandon Ellerby. Now, one of the points of emphasis this year in college football is targeting. Yeah, it's not a new rule. The rule's been on the books since 2008. The difference is, is this year, players can be ejected if called for targeting. Ellerby was not, and it's important to note, it doesn't have to be helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact in order to be targeting, but the initial contact to the head, particularly if it's a defenseless player, I uh, sympathize with Ellerby to a degree, until uh, kind of right there, I'm not, I, probably I, not enough, but. I think if you're Ellerby, as a defender, you know he's going to the ground. There is no yep. shot of him keeping his balance, therefore I don't know if you have to take that shot as a defender. But he's also on the ground, so how do you hit a target that's on the ground well, without lowering your head? Well, I mean, that's, I'd have to get my head underneath the ground. But it doesn't necessarily have to be the initial it was an contact with hit. your helmet. It wasn't a smart can, hit. A targeting hit can be with a forearm, an elbow, or anything. As Shaw fires out and has his man, Demir Bird, Bird down to the 30-yard line. And with all of the emphasis and with the news today, with the NFL settlement, 
as a result of the after effects of concussion. Just something that's trying to get out of the game. Watch how football. Shaw throws this football before his wide receiver, Demir Bird, even turns around. There's that anticipation we're talking about where Connor Shaw has to improve. He's done a pretty good job of that tonight. And a flag comes in. Spurrier's running out trying to get a timeout. He might have had too many guys on the we have a flag on play. Illegal substitution, offense, 12 players in formation, five-yard penalty, first down. Samantha, what do you have on Victor Hampton? Yeah, Reese, the head athletic trainer from South Carolina, says he is suffering from a neck sprain. They're taking him into the locker room right now for x-rays, so we won't know a little bit for a few more minutes at least, guys. Wow. That, that would be, Sam, a big loss for South Carolina because Victor Hampton is their best shutdown corner. And, of course, he's lining up tonight against Quinshaw Davis, the best wide receiver for UNC. And they're not deep at cornerback. That's not, I mean, their strength and depth is definitely on the defensive line. They can't afford to be losing the corner. And they're not out of the woods here yet, but they do play Georgia next week, too. Shaw pulls it down to run again. Connor inside the 30. Dragged down by Trey Boston. And it's more important how you rush a quarterback that can run. Defensive ends can't just fly up the field and lose contain. You can't just come inside. Everybody has to stay in their rush lanes and keep Connor Shaw in the pocket. He started hot. Look at the graphic. But if you keep him in the pocket and don't let him scramble and extend the play, he's a lot less effective. You know, I'd like to see South Carolina get back to running the football a little bit. I mean, where did that go? Yeah. They had so much success just pushing UNC off the ball in the first quarter. We got to get back to that a little bit here, even though there's under four minutes to go in the half. The South Carolina offense, which started off like a well-oiled machine, has hit some bumps in the road. Spurrier uses a timeout. Second down and a long play. South Carolina up 17 to 7 inside four minutes to play in the first half. Reese Davis, Jesse Palmer, David Pollock, Samantha Ponder, glad to have you with us on the opening night of the 2013 season. So Right now, North Carolina probably missed an opportunity to draw a little bit closer with the muff punt, but you get the sense right now the Tar Heels are in pretty good shape, given uh, given the way things started, at least. They are, if they can hold South Carolina from scoring a touchdown here at the end of the half. I think it's even more demoralizing you go in down 24-7. to 7. Even though you are getting the ball back in the first half, this defense has to step up big right now. Their defense doesn't have many answers. I I'm not sure that they're going to be able to continually stop South Carolina. And offensively, they put a nice drive together that was also put together or helped out by South Carolina in penalties. So they're not out of the woods, but they do have to get a stop right now because they got to start putting something together on offense. Crowd here at Williams Price. Electric early. Quieting down a little bit. Keep a little something to rev them up again. Tar Heels trying to come up with another stop. Shaw has Bruce Ellington. Ellington's inside the 15. His first catch of the year. It'll be first and 10 for the Gamecocks. And now they're in the red zone. Bruce Ellington is the best wide receiver South Carolina has. The three-year starter, a point guard on the basketball team. He's got that ability to get in and out of cuts and control his body. This throw is actually a little bit behind him. You see him put the foot in the ground, pluck the ball out of the air. It's a nice catch. Led the team with 600 yards a season ago. Had the game winner. 11 seconds to play in the Outback Bowl against Michigan. There's that run you were looking for. Well, and straight ahead is Mike Davis getting inside the 10. Kareem Martin on the stop. I think South Carolina should be a great red zone team this year because of that offensive line. The best red zone teams every year, Davey, are the ones that can run the football. They should be that. And the best red zone teams, too, are usually the ones that can run the quarterback as well. <laughs> Being able to pick up those extra guys. Yeah, but they're so much bigger, so much more physical. And then you can spread them out like this right here, and Connor Shaw is a running back. So what do you, what do you protect? What do you stop? They're taking their time right now. They want to bleed this clock as much as they can. Not give Brent Renner a lot of time if he gets it back. Shaw, Bird, well defended by North Carolina. Bird has a great track speed. Run a 6-6-6, 60 meter dash from the indoor. Fastest guy on South Carolina's team, but North Carolina didn't give him any room to maneuver. 
down in the red zone. So a third down and six coming. And you have to put pressure on Shaw, but yeah. you have to put smart pressure. The defensive line have to be smart and make sure that they don't let him outside the pocket. Might be a good idea to spy Connor Shaw here. This could be a possible quarterback drop though. Biggest guy is tied in 89, Jarrell Adams. Shaw is being chased and he has to throw it away in South Carolina, we presume, will be forced to attempt a field goal, although there is a flag down in the end zone. And that has all the makings and marks of see the pass interference call there. Wow. And it is against South Carolina rather than the defensive team. Yeah, and you could see Jarrell Adams. Now the big tight end comes across the field, yeah, kind of yeah, just yeah, debos yeah. the D back. <laughs> you're, you're not really Charles, allowed, to, please. You're not allowed to do that. <laughs> Pass interference, <laughs> offense number 89. The penalty is declined, fourth down. Hey, look, Jarrell, 6'6, weighs about 240. Does that use your size to your advantage? But the defender is allowed to hold yeah, his yeah, ground. A little more subtle, right? <laughs> <laughs> a little more subtle in, in using the positioning. So Elliot Fry. Come on to try to make his second field goal of the night. This one going to be from 27 yards out. Officially, let's call it 26. What we'll really say is that it's good. Gamecock stretched their lead to 13 points with 92 seconds remaining to play in the first half. So Bren Renner and the Tar Heels will get one more chance. Field goal just went through the uprights and celebrating its ninth year, sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, Allstate has contributed more than $3 million in scholarship money. Well, we're just getting started. A great weekend of football to open this 2013 season. As we mentioned, 40-plus games on the ESPN Networks. Doubleheader on Saturday. Chick-fil-A kickoff game from Atlanta. Another of the SEC-ACC matchups. Number one, Alabama against Virginia Tech. Then LSU and TCU, a top 20. A couple of teams squaring off at Jerry World and the Cowboys Classic. That's a great doubleheader on ESPN Saturday night. Have you ever seen an offense right now more decimated than Virginia Tech? J.C. Coleman, their starting tailback, had two high ankle sprains a few weeks ago. Michael Holmes got kicked off the team. Another guy suspended for the game. Another guy had a career-ending ACL injury. Tight end, starting tight, tight end, end just gone. got hurt. You have one returning starter on the offensive line. You lost your three best wide receivers. Hey, but there's good news. You play Alabama week one. <laughs> hey! We'll say, other than that, things are going great. Yeah, and and cool. Alabama can't play defense, so we're fine. Yeah, you good. Virginia Tech with a new offensive coordinator, Scott Leffler, who was in his last game was at Auburn, and his offense didn't score against Alabama. We'll see if... Things change this time with Logan Thomas, who's hoping for a bounce back season after a rough 2012. Kick goes into the end zone. North Carolina will have it on the 25. So Brent Renner has 92 seconds. If he has another 3,000 yard season, he'll be Carolina's, North Carolina's all time leading passer. What have you seen from him in the first half? Well, Brent Renner hasn't always had a lot of time to throw the football, but for the most part, he's made the correct decisions and he has distributed the football to his playmakers. Hasn't always been easy. But they're going to need him to come up big right here in this last drive of the half. And he hasn't been particularly great on the deeper balls. You know, he has to take more shots. And right here, known passing situations. Can they hold up up front and give him some time? This will be a struggle for their offensive line. A toss it to Romar Morris. Morris gets the corner. Clowney chases him down and hammers in his green side 90 seconds. And, and the deep ball, especially outside the hash, is, is the place where you think Renner struggles the most. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think he's great at getting through his progressions, one, two, three, but stretching it out yeah. wide, throwing it deep is where he struggles a little bit. Take a shot here on second and short if he wants. wants. Running out of time, buying some more. Now Renner will throw. He's trying to get it to Quinshaw Davis. It'll be third down and a long one. Well, I think Bryn Renner knows better than that. You can't take unnecessary sacks here in a two-minute situation. He had a completion right over the football, which would have guaranteed a first down. And that's the key right now, because you have to generate points on this drive heading into halftime to maintain momentum. And it also would have stopped the clock momentarily to move the chains. Even though Carolina, North Carolina is a hurry up tempo type offense, it would have given them a chance to set. Instead, they're looking at third and one. 
quick to Davis. First down. And he gets out of bounds to stop the clock. 57, 56 seconds now remaining in the first half. And Reese, 56 seconds is an eternity for this offense. With the tempo they can play at, two timeouts remaining. That's a lot of time for Brent Renner to operate trying to get at least in the field goal range. If they keep dinking and dunking the whole time, it won't be an eternity. Renner wanted to take the shot, couldn't find a guy. Now in the middle of the field, a little too high for the freshman Ryan Switzer. I think right there you see a microcosm and the difference between Connor Shaw and Brent Renner. Connor Shaw able to run the football, generate first down with his legs, and how that stresses a defense. Brent Renner, not quite the athlete Connor Shaw is, makes them a little bit more limited. Second down and 10. Heels inside their 40. Now Switcher will get it. Switcher couldn't keep his feet. Pot continuing to run. Fedora wisely opting to use a timeout here. Is taking the heels a few seconds to get back and get lined up. So we have 40 seconds left. We have third down and long here. What would you expect to see? To me, your biggest playmakers are tight end Eric Ebron and wide receiver Quinshaw Davis. And I think to Davey's point that he made earlier, I agree. I think Bryn Renner's best throws are over the middle of the field. We haven't seen a lot of pressure from South Carolina yet on this drive. I think you look for something over the middle of the field to those two big targets. And let's not forget, you've started to use some tempo, and you see there's some sucking wind going on. And, and Clowney's tired. Clowney had his hands and, on his knees there a second ago. He, he stood up on a pass rush a second ago and just kind of stood there and hand fight. But listen, it, it is tough when you do run plays back to back to back. But he talked about it. This offseason, put in the work, ready to play hard the whole time. It's not going to be as easy as you think it is. It, nobody's just going to show up and give it to you. you got to go out there and earn it. And that's the one critique I have watching him in the offseason. He doesn't consistently give the effort. If he does, it's a wrap. North Carolina goes to the ground. That was a very conservative call, and it didn't fool anybody. So now fourth down. To Devian. Getting into the backfield. Instead, it just left room for Chaz Sutton to make the stop. And clock continues to run, and South Carolina is not going to bother to stop it. And Larry Fedora is going to be content to go to the locker room, still within a couple of touchdowns. And Bruce Ellington's back to receive the punt, but he's not going to get a chance to do so. Clock strikes zero. South Carolina puts 20 on the board in the first half. North Carolina bowed up later in the first half, staying in the game. North Carolina will have the ball to start the second half. Would have been nice from their perspective to get a score on the board before halftime to have back-to-back -back scores, a little game pressure on Clowney in the game, Cox. But as it is, they'll come out with a hill to climb when we start the second half. Hey, Gamecock fans, this is Marcus Lattimore. Gamecocks got out of the shoot quickly. Long touchdown pass to Shaq Rowland. Dylan Thompson came off the bench and threw another touchdown pass, but Fedora's team hanging in, and he's now with Sam Ponder. Coach, you told us this week that you weren't as concerned about noise and the crowd as you were about your offense handling the emotional environment. What's your assessment of how they've done that? I, I thought we did a poor job, actually, in the first half handling. I think uh, like we had too many guys who were geeked up. They just need to relax and play football. I mean, there's nothing that's happening in this game that hadn't happened in any game. So just relax and play. Obviously, your offense is predicated a lot on multi-tempo looks. When you look at how you've gotten their defensive line with their hands on their knees, you've gotten them tired at times. What do you need to do to take advantage of those opportunities? we got to keep moving the chains and, and just finish drives off. All right, thanks, Coach. Okay. Guys. Samantha, that was one of the stated goals for dealing with Jadeveon Clowney and the entire South Carolina defensive line. Try to wear them out. Did they have enough body blows over the course of the first half to pay dividends in the second half? Coming up, Scott Mark Lewin Bryan with the Land Rover halftime report. They'll look ahead to the other game in the Palmetto State this weekend, Georgia and Clemson, and the Mayday Minute when you come back. Yes, who? This is Dick Sporting Goods Kickoff Week. ESPN College Football Primetime, served by Applebee's, part of Dick Sporting Goods Kickoff Week. 
Damian Clowney didn't have a lot of sack, but his impact was felt, but not quite as much as that of the South Carolina offense. A couple of touchdown passes, South Carolina up 20 to 7. Glad to have you with us. ESPN College Football Primetime served by Appleby. Second half just about to get started here at williams Price Stadium as you enjoy an opening night. The SEC on ESPN. The SEC hosting the ACC. One of three matchups between these two conferences this weekend. North Carolina will get the ball first to start the second half and hoping to cut into this 13-point deficit. Reese Davis, Jesse Palmer, David Pollock, Samantha Ponder here. How about the Home Depot coaching adjustments in the first half? There's a variety of ways North Carolina slow down Jadavian Clowney. You see chips by the running back. They've double teamed him up front on the offensive line. They've used misdirection in their protections, pulling guards. They've also thrown screens over his head, and it's affected his win. Davey, you see right here, he's gotten a little bit tired. Yeah, and you, and you have to keep him guessing. You can't, and also, they also moved him around. They put him at the nose tackle, the left end, the right end, a little bit of linebacker walking around, but don't let him, don't let them zone in on him. He got tired, and he's got to make more impact plays, but he still felt a little bit. Look at him moving around. Look at the different snaps. There's seven different places that Whammy Ward, the defensive coordinator, planned to line up Clowney. You see his productivity in the different spots. He's played 25 of the 34 snaps. He hasn't made a huge impact play, but he's also been around the ball and causing North Carolina to do several different things that they wouldn't have to do. Sean Tapley takes it inside his five from North Carolina. He's across the 25. And Tapley, who had a kickoff return for a touchdown last season against Virginia Tech, has a good return. That's where North Carolina will start as we check in with Samantha Ponder. Reese, of course, I asked Steve Spurrier coming off the field if it was the that no, he got a little tired. He said Jadavion also complained about a stomach virus that he heard about for the first time. But he said the main concern right now isn't defense, it's getting them to run the ball better offensively. We'll see if they can do that in the second half. All right, Samantha. The clowny, bad stomach, fatigue and all is in. Omar Morris, the first play from scrimmage in the second half. Carries it across the 35 in Victor Hampton, who was hit on that punt return earlier and had the sprained neck, is back in the game. That's him, number 27. And that's huge for South Carolina defensively. Again, he's their best shutdown corner. He's matched up with Quinshot Davis. Morris now not finding much running room, and he steps out of bounds. It'll bring up third and long. Chad Sutton was the one able to string it out. So now, North Carolina, which started sluggishly on offense in the first half is in danger of going three and out with their first possession in the second half. Yeah, and Brent Renner has been underwhelming. I mean, he's got to do a better job of pushing the ball down the field and making those shots when they're there, because otherwise South Carolina will squat on rounds and stay right at the sticks. Clowney collapsing the pocket and Renner right on cue fires a dart to Quinshaw Davis. That's a little bit more of what you're talking about, isn't it? Davey wanting him to throw on time, throw down the field. Perfect job. Gets the snap, looks left, and a great job by his receiver getting across the face. Davis does a good job, and Renner hits him in stride. He's got to take shots. Otherwise, South Carolina can just pin their ears and stay shallow. Renner to Davis. Double pass, maybe, and Quinshaw pulls it down. That was a backward pass. Took what he could get, maybe picked up three. And Davey, I agree with you fully. I understand Jadavian Clowney's out there lining up all over the place. Yeah. But your left tackle, James Hurst, is a preseason All-American for a reason. He's a good player. So he's going to have to block him, and maybe you're going to have to help him. But this offense will not beat South Carolina dinking and dunking and throwing tunnel screens on him. Second down and seven. So they are making some progress, maybe not with tunnel screens, but with slants. There's another slant to Quinshot Davis, going to be a little bit short of the first down. James Hurst isn't good enough to block Jadavian Clowney by himself all night, but here's a guy, you see what Brent Renner says about him. I've got 100% confidence that James Hurst has burnt me three years. He's the best left tackle in the country, and my mom trusts him with my life. His mom doesn't have to block Clowney. His mom's also not a scout. Well, now, wait a minute. You don't know mom's credentials. She's been watching. And, and listen. James Hurst has gone up against Robert Quinn in practice, and he's gone up against Quinn Coker's in practice, two first-round picks. He's seen Daquan Bowers from Clemson. He's seen Bjorn Warner from Florida State. He's never yet seen a guy, though, as talented as today than Clowney. Well, Clowney looks as if he's struggling out there. Meanwhile, it's fourth down as Morris was stopped short. North Carolina needs a yard, and it's a pretty long one. 
A.J. Blue has the first down to the 30-yard line, and North Carolina moves the sticks. They're at the 30, and touchdown here, and it's a little interesting here, fellas. Tremendous surge by that right side of the offensive line. Remember, a lot of the inexperience is on that right side. The freshman at right tackle, a sophomore with only four starts at right guard. Playing very well here in the half. Renner has Ebron out there, and Eric couldn't quite hold on to it. E.J. Gurley was on the cover. But again, I'm okay with him. He had a guy in the flat, but I'm okay with that because he's making South Carolina think about that now, making them cover deep. Otherwise, you know, they're, they're going to be onto this high percentage dink and dunk all game long. Davey, I also like that they're moving the pocket with him. Yeah. They're changing the launch points. So Jadavian, Clowney, Chaz, Sutton, and company can't just pin their ears back and tee off seven to nine yards behind the center. Clowney's taking a break. Quick pass out to Mark McNeil, the lacrosse player. It'll be third down and long, Hampton making the stop. And, and if you're going to do that, I wouldn't throw it at Victor Hampton. That guy is physical. He's a press corner. Get in your face. You see him on screens. He'll play that screen. He'll, he'll be physical and run support. That was a great job at the cornerback spot. I guess the next okay. And one of the things they wanted to do was take the air out of the coverage, too. Absolutely. Right. I think if you're South Carolina guys, you get double coverage right now with safety help on Quinshaw Davis. That's what they're doing. Renner gets rid of it. Morris has a lot of guarded around him and no chance to get anywhere close to the first down. And again, it's Victor Hampton, who appears to be the picture of health. And here we go into the third quarter. And it was Darius English, the other defensive end, with a speed rush, getting to Bren Renner, making him move his feet right away. Now decision time if you're Larry Fedora. Fourth down, you're on the 30-yard line. That'd be about a 47-yard field goal. Make this a 10-point game. He wants to go for it on fourth and 10. Well, the, the longest field goal of Thomas Moore's career was a 46-yarder against Duke, so that's not always indicative of where the range is, but one would think you're right on the edge of his range to begin with. So 10 yards needed for the first down from Renner. Buying some time, firing a dart. First down, North Carolina, and it's Mark McNeil again. Carolina quickly to the line of scrimmage, wanting to get another playoff inside the red zone. Big fourth down completion from Renner. Yeah, and, and no Clowney, and great protection by the offensive line, getting more confidence up front. Now Clowney's back. A.J. Blue brought down. That might be a face mask. Or horse collar as the flag came in on the tackle. Instead, it's holding. Offense number 85, 10-yard penalty, first down. All right, there was a penalty on that play. South Carolina's defense right now, guys, is absolutely gassed. They tried to get a late substitution right there. There were still two defensive linemen jogging off the field. They were walking. They were so tired. This tempo from North Carolina on this opening drive really wearing them down. And you know what it's like? This was part of North Carolina's game plan. It's almost like in a boxing match. Body, body blow, blows. body no blow, doubt. body blow in the first half. Now will it pay off in the second? Will the tempo wear them down? And you can't simulate this in practice. As much as your offense wants to try to give you good looks, you're not going to get this kind of offense because this is you know, this is a year two of them doing it every single day in practice. And it's they're getting better and more improved with North Carolina. Empty set now. But the holding penalty on Ebron makes it third and 20. Hurst does a good job on Clowney. Renner pulls it down, and he slides it to 20. Coming in there late on the hit, it appeared, was Sky Moore, freshman. Hey, he said he Hurst had his back. About this? Well, we, weren't, we weren't listening. It, it's easier to block Clowney when he's a bit tired. And I think, Davey, this is a part where that depth on the defensive line for South Carolina has got to show up right now. A lot of the backups in the game at a critical junction. They got to start playing big. They got to play like first teamers right now. Renner's hit five of six on the drive. They'll go to the ground with Morris. Morris still on his feet. Inside the 10 to the five yard line, and North Carolina is knocking on the door. It's a different defense when they're tired, and you're seeing that right now. This inexperienced offensive line from North Carolina, they're getting a ton of push. How about the backside pull from guard Caleb Peterson knocking Darius English out of the play? They're looking very physical right now. They're looking like they're in better shape than South Carolina. Caleb Peterson, the freshman from Auburn, Alabama, 
Blake Anderson, the offensive coordinator, says his name doesn't come up much anymore, doesn't miss assignments. One of the strongest guys on the team. Did a good job on the pull. So it's first and goal now for the Tar Heels as they try to draw within a single score. And a 16 play drive for a touchdown. Now here comes snap number 14. On the ground again, and good push from the middle of that North Carolina offensive line. Take a look again going back and seeing Jadavian Clowney here on that short yard. Eric Ebron taking him one on one. That's a tight end. He's only 240 pounds. North Carolina just trying to slam it in with the running game. DJ Holloman there to make it third and goal. Now third and goal. What do you want to see from Renner here? I like the way they're running it, but I like the size of Quinshaw Davis and wide receiver on a jump ball or a back shoulder throw at wide receiver, six foot four. Well, I'm fine with North Carolina running it, but if you're going to run it right between the tackles, I want A.J. Blue running it. I mean, if you're going to get Romar Morris, let him get on the edges a little bit, but down here near the goal line, they love the little zone read with Renner, and he will keep it. There's Quinshaw at the top. Press coverage. And the ISO matchup with Quinshaw, they like. Renner. Does he have enough? No, instead he throws it toward the end zone. Changed his mind a couple of times, and it'll be fourth down and goal. Looked like Brent Renner wanted to throw to the top of the screen on Quinshaw Davis. It took a little time for the route to open up. He had him on an end route. You'll see it right up here. But I think he clears open right there. He yeah. keeps his eyes downfield. I think there's a throw to be made. Well, he had Ebron on a little option, too, it looked like, but he got held. So both those guys, his best two targets working at Tanner. And Thomas Moore going to try to salvage a field goal out of the drive, and he does. A 20-yarder, so North Carolina's opening possession is a productive one. 20-10 to 10 now as Renner has the heels back in it. Back in Columbia, South Carolina, time for the Aflac. trivia question. Jadavion Clowney won the 2012 Ted Hendricks Award, which goes to the best defensive end in the country. Who is the only player to win the award twice? No hints. South Carolina defense looks a little gassed over on the sideline, but they were able to Hold North Carolina to a field goal, so now the pressure turns to the Tar Heel defense to see if they can get the ball back quickly for their offense and get them another shot. Perfectly placed kickoff for the touchback. Gamecocks take it on the 25. Here is the answer. Clowney, the reigning Hendricks Award winner, the only guy to win it twice, is... Bam! Old number 47, David Pollock, won in 2003 and 2004. Oh, this is my favorite part. Uh, hey, is Lou Holtz watching this? Woo! Oh, uh, Lou Holtz loves this play. So tell me how you read the key on that, Davey. You, you knew what they were going to do, didn't you? Offset back in the shotgun was 95% rollout, so <laughs> Holtz gave it away. <laughs> uh, and there goes Mike Davis. This might turn the... Tied of momentum, Davis down the sideline. He is gone. Touchdown, Gamecocks. A 75-yard run for Davis. And I just said, big series for North Carolina to get off the field. I don't think that's what Tar Heel fans had in mind when I say get off the field. What a response by South Carolina getting back to running the football and they find an explosive play when they have to regain momentum. South Carolina has a 65-yard touchdown pass tonight, now a 75-yard touchdown run. Just when it looked as if the Tar Heels were creeping back into the game, Gamecocks dropped the hammer. Hey, I give that kicker an A. A for <laughs> effort, but he's missing one on his shirt. Isn't it Carolina? Come on. Carolyn today. Just like, Carolyn today. Carolyn. Carolyn's kicking the heck out of that ball. It's been perfect. 
Well, let's take a look at the replay and why this happened. You're going to see a corner come in for run support out of your right, and I think it was Jabari Price, and just absolutely whiffs. Here's a better look. Coming in from the outside, listen, corners don't like to tackle, but that's a terrible job of not turning the ball back inside to your help and making a play. And Gamecocks fans, it's going to be very, very hard to ever replace Marcus Latimer with respect to his physicality and his ability to break tackles. But Mike Davis already is an upgrade at running back with respect to the home run. He's got better speed than Marcus Lattimore and the ability to take it to the house. That's something they didn't always have, even with Marcus Lattimore. It's kind of sacrilegious to say, man. How? I don't know. He wasn't fast. Ah. He was powerful, broke tackles. He broke tackles, I, but he went, he, that dude, that, you never saw him run like that. I say nothing bad about Marcus Lattimore. Right. That's Davis's first 100-yard game. I don't think he's saying anything bad about him, but just saying he didn't necessarily have I breakaway speed. speed. I think he would have scored on that one, too. Uh, no, I, I, I would agree with that, Jess. Uh, uh, Price coming in and whiffing uh, like that. Hey, he, by the way, Lattimore is one of those guys that didn't work fast unless you were trying to catch him from behind. That's right. Fair well, generally, he ran you over. He ran three guys over. How would you get the second one? Now, let's see if Sean Tapley have an answer in the return game. He does not not make it to the 20 yard line. A great atmosphere at Williams Bryce Stadium tonight and Saturday night. It will be a sea of orange in Death Valley, Georgia and Clemson, separated by an hour and a half or so of highway, but they don't play that often anymore. Great historical games. Legendary Larry Munson talking about Kevin Butler going to reach for a long one here. A couple of teams with national championship aspirations. And of the three SEC-ACC matchups on the weekend, this game that we have tonight, the Virginia Tech-Alabama game, the ACC just going for upsets. In that game, the ACC team needs to win it. Tunnel screen, and McNeil has it. And he has a first down across the third. All right, this is a defining drive for South Carolina's defense. You just had a 17-play scoring drive from North Carolina. Now a one-play touchdown drive by your offense. So here you are, right back on the field. Let's show up. Let's see what you've got without you, David Clown. Omar Morris, strong, tough run up close to the 40. And David Clowney was gassed. I mean, he... He took himself out of the ball game. He was tired. I mean, there's nothing else you can say about it. I, listen, he's the most talented guy in the country. This is an area. What is that? I mean, that's not effort. You control your effort. And now the effort from North Carolina answer has been exemplary as they get into South Carolina territory and Clowney getting the headgear buckled up. He still hasn't. He, guys, he's not. Made a, didn't make a tackle in the last drive. Flags fly and his Morris has it again. North Carolina right now is working at Mach 9 speed and tempo. I mean, they have really picked it up. South Carolina can't even get a substitution on the field right now with players jogging on the field. Clowney's tired even going back out there. And every defensive line that gets tired takes plays off in college football. Don't act like they don't, but you just want to see more. Illegal substitution, defense number four, five-yard penalty, first down. His tempo is starting to rear its ugly head right now. You see guys jogging off. Guys coming on slowly. There's miscommunication. And look, Brent Runner's ready to go. North Carolina's set up. They've got a lot of juice. Well, and if they don't sub, you can't sub. I mean, especially on that, you know, on first down right there, they're not going to let you substitute. They're going to do that every single time. So after the penalty, it's first and five. Clowney after Renner. And Renner goes down on the sack. Gerald Dixon Jr. was the first one to get there from the middle of that Gamecock defensive line. So from here on out, guys, South Carolina has to win first and second down and force North Carolina in obvious passing situations on third and force them to slow down and get the right call in. But there's an example of that backup defensive line, Davey, getting some push and making a play. And they're playing guys. They're rotating them in and out. Second and 11. Renner. And it looked like an option. And he got down just before Clowney came over the top. And now, and now Renner is cramping up. What do you think about the decision by Larry Fedora to run Renner? I think 
Bryn Renner is a better athlete than most people give him credit for, but I don't think he's a legitimate weapon against this defense with their speed. No, it makes no sense. Plus, he's a great passer. He's not built, you know, real big and strong. I don't think... I just don't... I don't like the idea to run him. Unless you're going to use him down by the goal line, that's the only time I support r running Bryn Renner. It is a humid night here, and Renner appears, we hope, it's just a cramp. You had a look at number 12, Marquise Williams. He's a sophomore from Charlotte. He won the backup quarterback battle with a highly regarded true freshman, Mitch Trubisky, who was in for spring. Marquise actually missed spring. He had an academic issue and wasn't enrolled. Resolved that problem, came back, and did well. This guy Moore making the tackle on Renner. If we can see, see that knot coming up in the back of Renner's calf. Now, if Marquise Williams is to play, he is a runner. And last year, he would spell Bryn Renner. Even when games were close, they had packages of plays for him to run and throw. He's more of a dual threat option. He presents a different problem now for Lorenzo Ward in the South Carolina defense. And it's third and seven. Do you want to get Renner back in on the fourth and short runner? Marquise is going to keep it. Runs over one guy and another. And the short game will be fourth down. Marquise's moment of infamy came last year in a game we called against Virginia. Quinshot Davis had tied the ACC record with 16 catches. Ooh. They had, <laughs> had Marquise in the game. Somebody realized he needed one more catch, so they just tried to throw him a hit to get it. And Marquise threw a ground ball out there. It was a two-hopper. Yeah. <laughs> it was bad. He he got some grief from his teammates. He's a talented guy. Couldn't get up the first down that time, and North Carolina will be forced to punt it away. Anton, fair catch at the 11, and North Carolina's attempt to answer the long run from Mike Davis goes for North. North Carolina has run 22 offensive plays to just one South Carolina in the third quarter. The Gamecocks one play was a 75-yard touchdown run by Mike Davis. And first down throughout the game tonight, not just in the third quarter, but Connor Shaw and the Gamecock offense has been very productive. Brandon Wilds giving Mike Davis a break. He spins away from one. Picks up four, maybe five on first down. We check in with Chris Cotter. Reese, it's time to remind everybody about the AT&T All-American Player of the Week. Back again this year. Now, last year, Jadavian Clowney was the All-American Player of the Year. It's week one, so if you want to get involved, you can text your vote to 34763 from your mobile device. Hey, maybe Mike Davis here in week one is a good choice. Back to you, Reese. All right, Chris Wilds picks up a couple, and with those two yards, it now means that South Carolina has, they're never going to give him three, 173 yards rushing, 170 passing prior to that last carry. They were perfectly balanced. And a lot more to rushing to come. Yep. I mean, you've seen Steve Spurrier. When he gets up, he just wants to get out of here with a W. They'll run the football a lot the rest of this game. And they got to get this first down, guys. This is huge to allow that defense to get a rest. Convert this. You got to do it on the ground, whatever it takes. First down and more for Wilds across the 30, and the clock will run after the markers are set for the first down. The difference in this offense, again, guys, can be this offensive line. It's the best Steve Spurrier has ever coached here in South Carolina. They have a lot of size. They got a lot of good push. And you see the head ball coach, he likes it. You don't have to throw 50 times a game to make him happy. 45, he doesn't mind, though. <laughs> Jake Jones not, making the catch. Not anymore. Back in your day, you used to throw oh, 45 yeah. times. But see, even that little quick screen that's out to Nick Jones, that's the extension of a running game. Baby, you're absolutely right. It's a safe play. It continues to gobble up yardage. It gobbles up clock. It's a different it's, it's a different attitude they can have this year. They should be able to wear SEC defenses down, I think. They've never been able to do that since he's been the head coach here. They're starting to wear down North Carolina. The defensive front really has been overwhelmed throughout the night. On the subject of conditioning, South Carolina's defensive line has gotten gassed. 
Is that strictly a tempo thing? Is it a first game thing, a humidity deal, or a cause for concern? It seems like a silly thing to say when you're up 27-10, but still. It is not humidity because they practice in humidity all camp long. It has been a cool summer here. It is, a, it is a tempo thing. I think it's an effort thing, Davey, to be yeah. honest. He's trying to present the responsible opposing view here. <laughs> Doing a good job over there. Yeah, see, I'll be, I'll be the one the defensive lineman like after tonight, not you guys. On the Shaw. <laughs> gets down to the 47. It'll be second and seven. But, but that's why you've seen more tempo in college football, is because the goal is for Larry Fedora in this offense to, to get defensive linemen tired because you're not going to outman them. And right. Especially when you got guys that are so athletic and strong and big, you want to try to get an advantage somehow. And that's what. There's no college football coach that came to this year as an offensive coordinator and said, I want to play slower. Every single one of them wants to play faster to get that advantage. So Except for South Carolina seven. right now. They want to play slow and bleed that clock. Back to Wilds. A lot of running room. He'll be spotted really close on the first down. Might be See where they end up marking him close to that yellow line. Maybe nose of the football short. And guys, we're talking about the size. That left tackle, 53. He's six foot eight, 341 pounds. That's Corey Robinson. That's the biggest lineman Steve Spurrier has ever coached in his life. The guy beside him, number 50, AJ Khan. He's a legit NFL prospect. I mean, he's pulling. He's a mauler. And these are the kinds of guys they have on this line this year. Experienced. It's just different. Shaw sneaks ahead. Keep it inside a minute to go in the third quarter. South Carolina has another first down driving to perhaps put this game away. And we see the weight difference again. They're outweighing North Carolina by 50 pounds a player. And, and being big and being heavy is really good. But South Carolina is also very athletic, guys. These guys can play in space. They can pull and move around. They're a legit offensive line. And this is what they love to do most is ground and pound. Shaw is perhaps going for the put away shot. Instead, South Carolina gets a sack. Norquitas Otis been active tonight in the final play of the third quarter. A positive one for the Tar Heel defense as Fedora and the Heels try to hang in. Do they have a fourth quarter rally in them? We'll see when you come back. You're watching the SEC on ESPN and 81,572 watching the first matchup between North Carolina and South Carolina since 2007. Aerial coverage tonight provided by Goodyear. Tires that go the distance make Goodyear a fan favorite. Goodyear, more driven. South Carolina opening the fourth quarter after Connor Shaw took a sack. You know, our stats guru at ESPN.com are coming up with a new quarterback rating. It's going to measure how effective all aspects of quarterback play are. Connor Shaw's rating from last year when they ran through the system wasn't that great, largely because he took a lot of sacks on first and second down, 18 of the 25, and it backed him up, put him behind the chain. He just took one there, a loss of 10 on the first down, make it second and 20. Tries to get it out to Nick Jones. His arm was hit as he threw. Again, Norquithus Otis, who, for my money, has probably been the best defender for North Carolina tonight. No yeah. doubt about it. He stepped up, Davey. He's the one that's applied the most consistent pressure tonight. Well, and, and you talked about it. We talked about the physical nature of the offensive line for South Carolina. Pass protection. Is, is that going to be an issue down the road? You talked about Corey Robinson, 6'8", 341. Got beat around the corner pretty easily. Yep. There's a lot of guys down the road that's going to play that can really put some pressure on the quarterback and come off the edge with some speed. The point about Shaw certainly was not to diminish his great playmaking capabilities, which we thought we were about to see evidence there. That tackle made by Darius Lippert. Lippert playing for the first time tonight since the 2011 Independence Bowl. Hurt his knee in that game and then hurt it again and kept him out of last season. He is a an outstanding athlete, and they need to have him in the middle of that defense. More SEC action coming up as soon as we're done. Ole Miss and Vanderbilt, 9.15 Eastern time. South Carolina, Tyler Hall going to have to hunt it away to T.J. Thorpe. Thorpe is standing at his own 10, and 
Oh, almost had it blocked, but the ball was deflected. Therefore, no flag came out. The referee was right on top of it and immediately signaled that the ball had been had been touched, and it was Norkethus Otis again trying to make a game-changing play for the Tar Heels. Just barely missed it. North Carolina trying to hang in the game. I love this first weekend of college football, oh, just wall to wall. Amen, brother. Part of our Dick Sporting Goods kickoff week continues Saturday night. A.J. McCarron leading the Crimson Tide, looking for an unprecedented three-peat national championship. Of course, the process won't allow him to talk about that just yet. Start with Virginia Tech in Atlanta, then LSU. The That's going to be a good one. TCU. Gary Patterson taking some shots at Les Miles. Although Gary sort of later said he didn't, didn't intend it to be perceived as a shot necessarily. I mean, those two guys have a relationship. <laughs> we're always trying to stir the pot. I'll tell you what we're talking about in a moment is Bryn Renner fires complete out to Thorpe. Now, LSU running back Jeremy Hill, as most people know, has had some legal issues and not exactly certain where he stands, how much he'll play against TCU. Devontae Fields is stand on defensive end for TCU. Continue the story in a moment. It's A.J. Blue looking to get to that yellow line for the first down. It'd be a little bit short. Fields was announced, suspended for TCU for the first couple of games for the situation within the university and TCU rules. That's been appealed, and now we're waiting to see whether he's going to play. What David was talking about was that Gary made reference to the fact that oh, you instilled discipline by whether you let guys play or not and how you punish them. I tried to clean it up a little bit later after that, but that's that's what you were referring to with the with the shots supposedly between false two yard, head coaches. Offense number five, five yard penalty, third down. And, and I'm not sure we know what Les is gonna do yet either. Uh, Jeremy because he's Hill. been kind of coy about it, but I think Jeremy Hill definitely deserves a suspension for what he did. I mean he, he was he had some previous legal troubles. He was on probation and he was involved in involved in a fight. Yeah, later absolutely. Later. Yeah. Just in case people have missed some of the details. Fields, meanwhile, reinstated to a degree. The Patterson saying this week that those who know him well have an idea of whether he'll play or not. The screen to AJ Blue is going to get the first down and he gets out of bounds. Tremendous play call by offensive coordinator Blake Anderson anticipating pressure coming from the weak side of the field. They throw the screen right into the teeth of the blitz and AJ Blue able to make them pay. And here goes North Carolina again with that tempo right up at the line of scrimmage ready to play. First and ten for Renner. Oh, throw to Ebron, and Renner just got it in there. Eric kept his concentration, made the grab. A dangerous throw. Eric Hampton Ebron just missed the pick six. Bryn Renner got very lucky on this throw. His feet weren't even close to being set when he made it. You see Jadavian Clowney there kind of gingerly coming off the field. Uh, Renner's going to run it again. I just don't think this is a good idea. Just... I mean, two's better throwing it. Either give it to somebody or let him pitch it out there. Clowney's on the bench. Because I get to play offensive forward moment for a moment. <laughs> but I'm not wrong, right? No. Uh, and plus, you need him the rest of the season. You need him to be able to throw the football. South Carolina needs Clowney on the field. This is what Renner does best. Throwing the ball, and Jimmy Legree was there to make sure that T.J. Thorpe went absolutely nowhere, so now it's third down. You know, this is interesting. For all the other SEC teams out there and their offensive coordinators that are watching this game and watching South Carolina, you're getting a pretty good indicator right now of what Tempo does to this defense and their best player. Don't think that Mike Bobo and Georgia aren't watching this, maybe potentially getting ideas for their big matchup in week two. Tough opening two weeks for both Georgia and South Carolina. Phillip Dukes. Moved. Let's see if he was enticed to jump into the neutral zone. False start. Offense number 60. Five-yard penalty. Third down. To the, center Russell Bodine. And to that point, Jesse, I, I understand what you're saying, and we've seen the, the cumulative effects. But the difference is, too, they've only, North Carolina's only got 10 points. I mean, it's not like they're lighting the scoreboard up like a pinball. They only got 250 yards of total offense. It's 
I mean, you, you see some signs that you say, man, man, that didn't look great. But South Carolina's defense, they're going to be tough. They're going to be physical. They're good in the trenches. They're good at corner. I think they're still going to be heck to deal with. They're going to see better offenses in the SEC, too. Better offensive lines. In third and 19, South Carolina goes to the run. Omar Morris picks up nine. So we're inside 11 minutes to play. It'll be fourth down and 10. And North Carolina going to punt it away. I know the percentages are low in that situation. You go to the run here, down 17. You got to have it three times. Time starting. It's been against you for a while, but now it's really starting to be against you. I think their defense has played a little bit better. I, I think this is the last time you punt it, though. I wouldn't have punted it. The punt's going to work out as well as you could have hoped. Pinning South Carolina back inside his 10. They'll mark it at the 6. So 10 minutes and 16 seconds left to play on opening night. Hockey by 17. Spurrier coaches his quarterbacks not to throw two receivers instead. He wants you throwing into open areas of the field on time without even looking at your receivers. And here's an example on an in route. Ready? Go. He doesn't want you to drop back at the top of the route, locate the receiver, telegraph your throw, because it gives the defense an opportunity to make a jump on the ball. Instead of staring at the wide receiver, Coach Spurrier wants you to feel the receiver coming into the open area of the field. Go. Hey, way to spin that magic beam. What, what do you mean by feel the receiver coming into the open area? Coach Spurrier doesn't want you looking at receivers. Instead, looking into open areas of the field and feeling defenders in areas that you know the receiver is going to run into and then throw that on time. Right now, Coach Spurrier wants North Carolina to feel the brunt of his running game. And Mike Davis, I think they got just about every Tar Heel sort of Michael Jordan trying to get him on the ground. Nine yard pickup on first down. Let's check in with Chris Cotter in the studio. Reese, time for more Coors Light cold hard facts. You know, a lot's expected of George O'Leary's Black Knights this year. And take a look at this play. UCF quarterback Blake Bortles doing his best Johnny Manziel impersonation. Gets the football back, scrambles, and finds J.J. Warden. 39 yards later for a touchdown. Central Florida 24, Akron Zips zip on ESPN3, Reese. All right, Chris. Bortles, UCF now part of the new American Conference. Brandon Wilds into the game and picks up the first down. And it was a perfect example of a play where you have to anticipate a throw earlier tonight. Saw an Jeff. example here by Connor Shaw. You're going to see him drop back. And at this point in the top of his drop, his vision is in this third of the field. But he's throwing to this receiver at this area. He's not looking at him, but he knows the area is open to throw into. The ball comes out on time, and it's a very wide open throw. Trusting this coaching, to me, was the hardest part about playing for Steve Spurrier. And it really took me three years before I trusted it. But when you start throwing the football with conviction and you believe in it, this offense is so much fun to play in because you can put up some big-time numbers as a quarterback. First and 10, Shaw pulls it and keeps it. David, what does it do to a defender? when a quarterback looks at a defense and reads a defense like that. Well, I, it's, it's the, the defensive backs, what you're taught to do is read the quarterback's eyes, and it really gives you an advantage. You can break on the ball and kind of vacate your zone pretty quickly. When he's not staring at a receiver, it makes it harder. So, you know, you, I think with the run, with the quarterbacks and Spurrier, you don't see as many mistakes from Connor Shaw, and you're not going to because it's harder to get a jump and a tell on where he's throwing the football. But why is he not sliding? I just that just drives me insane. Yeah, I'm with Get you. on the ground. We'll talk about that in just a second. With eight minutes and 20 seconds remaining here, this game is being suspended because lightning is in the area. We had an earlier message tonight for the fans to be aware that perhaps some bad weather was moving into the area. When we checked the radar, it appeared that perhaps the worst of it was going to move south of Columbia. But with lightning in the vicinity. Obviously, the safety of the fans and the players on both teams of the utmost importance. And these two teams will retire to their respective locker rooms in South Carolina, holding a 17-point lead. We'll keep you up to date 
on when this game might resume. The final 8:20 as South Carolina tries to finish off a season opening victory against their cross-border rivals from North Carolina. 27-10, Gamecocks have the lead. Let's check in with Chris Cotter now during this delay.